This is a research report from TUM, Technische Universität München. With satellite data from GOCHE, a mission of the European Space Agency, scientists have begun bringing views of our planet as revealing as they are unfamiliar into sharper focus. Geophysics, oceanography, climate studies, and civil engineering all should benefit from the most accurate representations yet of Earth's gravitational field, the global distribution of mass, and a figure called the geoid. We are trying to determine a level, so more or less generating a level that covers the entire globe. Usually satellites look for changes. We look for a reference with respect you can observe changes. For example, the change of the ocean, or the change of sea level, or the change of tectonics in the mountains, mountains motion. As coordinator of the team responsible for putting improved gravity and geoid data in users' hands, TUM geophysicist Rainer Rommel presented the first results based on just two months of measurements at ESA's Living Planet Symposium during the summer of 2010. By the fall, the team had computed a new model, combining data from both GOCHE and GRACE, a joint mission of NASA and the DLR, the German Aerospace Center, improving the picture even more. Zum Professor Roland Peil explains. Already a GOCHE-only model will of course become better, because now we have nine months instead of only two months available. Uh, and on the other hand, of course, also the combination will be better. These two components are complementary in the sense that uh, the GRACE mission is very strong in detecting the long wavelengths, the long spatial, spatial wavelengths, while on the other hand, uh, the GOCHE mission is mainly built to uh, detect the very details of the gravity field, so that we have now uh, a very accurate gravity field model uh, over a very wide range of wavelengths. And once ESA had overcome onboard computer problems that threatened to cut the satellite's mission short, scientists focused on prospects for longer-term data gathering, which would enhance first the accuracy and second the spatial coverage of the model. A third aspect is uh, also related to the fact that the uh, gravity field is not really static but is also uh, changing with time and of course only if you fly over a longer period you get the chance to um, uh, analyze this longer time series. A scientific target at the heart of the mission, literally the OC in Goche, is ocean circulation. We are working towards the possibility for the first time to really determine ocean circulation from space. Uh, this means that on the one hand you have to observe the actual ocean as it is and you have to reference it with respect to the geoid. And this is a very tiny difference between those two because the ocean is almost level. But from this tiny difference, you can determine how global oceans transport water and most of all, how much they transport heat because they are part of the heat engine of this planet. And of course, we want to know whether this heat chain, uh, engine is changing its habits. Processes that work on a much longer time scale than changes in climate and sea level as in plate tectonics, could also be revealed in unprecedented detail. The gravity field allows you to take a look into the Earth's interior. The most prominent methods in order to probe the Earth's interior is the interpretation of seismic waves, so earthquakes. But here you get an additional look that is related to the density distribution. In civil engineering, a new geoid could eventually help to cut construction costs while improving 
precision. If we have a global homogeneous gravity field information, then we will have the unique chance to get a unified height system. Classically, this, this heights about, about above sea level are derived from geodetic leveling. And this is a very time-consuming process, a very expensive process. In the future, most of this work can be done just by looking at your GPS receiver and getting heights above the sea level. Sea level, whether you are in Africa or in South America or in North America. And this is a real gain. Such gains depend on innovative engineering and a mission designed to push the limits. The orbit is the lowest ever for a science satellite, requiring both an aerodynamic design and gentle thrusters to maintain freefall. Orbit tracking gets a boost in precision from GPS. And Goche's main instrument, a gravitational gradiometer, is the first of its kind ever launched into space. The measurements themselves are uh, electric currents. So you have, first of all, to translate them into a gravity information. Then you have to give them the orientation. You have to take into account the motion of the satellite which disturbs the measurements. You have to make sure that the gravity field of the satellite itself does not disturb the measurements. So this is a huge chain which we call level one processing. And then you arrive at raw measurements. And the next step, and that's our main job, our main responsibility is to translate these raw measurements into products which can be easily used by all kinds of users in oceanography, in, in geophysics, in civil engineering. Ten institutions in seven countries are collaborating to deliver these products. What they will get is a measured, the, the tiny variations, and they are really tiny, in the gravitational attraction of the Earth. That's one of the major products. The second one is an expression of this level surface, more or less the geometry of the world oceans if they wouldn't move at all. Rommel, who first latched on to the idea behind this mission at Ohio State in the 1970s, is thrilled with what today's doctoral candidates and postdocs are doing to see it through. They're the latest in a long line, going back to 19th century geodesist Carl Maximilian von Bauernfeind. Bauernfeind was a very interesting person. He was not only the first director of this university, but also in the Bavarian Academy of Sciences. Uh, he was the one who was promoting uh, the idea of a European GOE you may say, at that time. And later it was the, the starting point of international geodesy, of the determination of the global figure of the Earth. 21st century geodesy has gotten an additional boost from one of the university's newest initiatives. Rommel and key Goche collaborators were among the first fellows of the Tom Institute for Advanced Study, directed by Patrick de Wilde. These personal relationships are very much within the context of the Institute. Uh, that is, I would say, the collaborative kernel. But there are many more reasons why we support a project like uh, Goche. One thing is developing new technology. And there's a lot of new technology involved here. And we have a general interest in, I would say, environmental science. But we approach it not from a political or even an ecological religious point of view, but we approach it from the point of view of getting as good measurements as we can and understanding as well as we can how, for instance, our, pla our planet Earth behaves. But what it will tell us is not really known yet. And I'm sure this will take several years.